What is up Amigos? So today we're looking at the notchback aerodynamics. So this is akin to the fastback that we looked at last week for the aerodynamics of that. However, it is significantly more complicated. As you can see here, I have a diagram. So we're gonna be going through what is a notchback, the angles and length that define the notchback geometry, and then the effects of these angles and lengths on the aerodynamics. So as I mentioned, we have a bunch of different angles here. First of all, we have the back window here, and we have the free stream velocity, U infinity. We have a typical car moving forwards. So the first angle is this alpha. And this angle is the, the angle between the back window or the back light and the horizontal angle, so, or the, the roof. And this is very similar to the fast back configuration. However, there are additional angles as well. So we have the angle of the boot lid or the trunk lid. We also have the angle of the back window or the back light to the back of the car. So these are all very important geometry as we'll go through in a second. We also have the length of the boot or the trunk. And this again affects the aerodynamics. So a notch back is one where we have a backlight and we also have a trunk or boot. Whereas the fast back, if you remember, we didn't really have this boot or trunk section. It just really went down into a cutoff. So this is very important because there's a different aerodynamic phenomenon that occurs behind the car because of this. So let's talk about this angle first, alpha. What does it do? So from that video that we saw with the fast back, it definitely controls the strength of certain vortices. So we know that vortices are going to be coming from upstream. They're gonna hit the C pillar, so the back window effectively, uh, kind of like the, the pillar just before the back window. And then it's gonna roll up into a vortex and there's one on each side. And this is very important because they can reduce the drag. Alternatively, if they are not designed properly, they can increase the drag. So that's what happens with the C pillar. But with this angle here, it also determines what the flow is doing over this, this point here. If the angle is too steep, this flow, so if the angle, let's say, is like this, that's alpha, the flow will come along and it will separate. So you would get a lot of recirculation in this zone and a massive wake. That's gonna increase drag a lot. Alternatively, we can make it significantly shallower so that's alpha now, the flow will come along and it will stay attached happily. And that means that we can reduce the drag. And also if this angle is very sharp, then that will be bad for the flow conditions because it will be more likely to separate. If we can round it, so let's say if we had this first situation, but we rounded this corner a little bit more, that will help keep the flow attached. Alternatively, we can use flow control devices where we Put things called vortex generators, which I won't go into in this video. We have podcasts and videos on it. I'll probably cover it in another video later. But just so you know, you can put different things at this back uh, corner to help the flow stay attached. However, that's not ideal. Ideally, you just want to design the car properly to begin with. Then we have the beta and gamma, which are these two angles here, and they can affect the size of the wake back here, but also how much lift the car is producing. And also it works very uh, well with the underbody. So this is called the diffuser section. Again, I won't go into it in this video because it's another concept again, but these are all connected. So the length, let's talk about what the effect this length has on the vehicle. And we'll talk about this angle a little bit more. So let's say we have this car here. So I'll just draw the back of it. Again, you zoom in a little bit. As I mentioned, we have these vortices coming back here, but this length is quite long, so what we have is we will often have a recirculation zone behind if the flow separates, which unfortunately often does happen. We also get a circulation zone or a wake in the back here, so we get a lot of wake. Now, if this is for if the length is sufficiently long, this will then result in these two sections being separate. If we have a very short boot or short trunk like this, the wake from behind will often, so we have this wake first of all here, so this recirculation zone. Then we have the wake here and it'll often bleed through and start to join up with this one. So we get a very complex phenomenon happening here. And this will often increase drag a lot because we now have a huge wake. Alternatively, if we have an angle here and we make it very sharp, so it's actually like a step now, what we have is the flow will separate and we'll just get a lot of flow separation here. But if we look at it from back on, so let's say we have now, we're looking at it from behind. So we have the 
this is the back window here, we actually get this like horseshoe vortex kind of thing happening here. So we have something happening like this and the flow rotates in like this. So it's kind of like a half vortex ring, vortex shoe kind of thing. And it's obviously connected to the, the geometry. So that is how these different angles can affect the flow physics. Let's go through again what we covered in this video. We covered what a notchback is. And a notchback is where we have not only the backlight or the back window, we also have a boot region. And the angles and lengths of a notchback are, first of all, the angle between the roof or the horizontal as well, and the backlight. We also have the angle between the back of the car and the boot or the, the trunk. We also have the angle between the back of the car and the backlight, so that's gamma. And we have the length of the boot or the trunk. The effects of these angles, for example, the alpha angle, which is the angle between the roof and the backlight or the back window, whichever one you want to call it, that can affect whether the flow stays attached like this or detached like that. So the amount of wake you'll get. The length of the back also determines whether the wake in the back will join up with the wake from the backlight if we do have one. Hopefully we don't, but sometimes we do. And also this backlight angle determines again this wake size and the boot angles and the boot backlight angles that can affect significantly the lift being produced of the car as well as the drag and also how well this diffuser section can work. So that's the end of this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and if you want to get um, a textbook that describes automotive aerodynamics very well, check out the link in the description. That's a link to one called Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. It's a really nice one that I like. It explains things very nicely. And if you want to get better at theory and CFD yourself, we do courses on that. You can find the link in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.